let's see if I can do this again and I'll narrate the thing. So we want to make ourselves a flywheel, but a flywheel is nothing but a gear with a hub on it. So uh, let's see if I can do this. Spur gears. Uh, we'll just go over here and see what happens. No. Uh, so we know uh, that we want a spur gear. We know we want it made out of aluminum. Um, the pitch. I'll leave that alone. Teeth. We want 100 teeth. We know that that's what's on the uh, starter starter ring right now. And uh, it gives us a choice of all this different pitch here. So let's see. 20 for the PA. We, well, we, we want a B, a B style. That means it's going to have teeth with a hub. And the hub's going to become the flywheel. Uh, so let's see here. What do we got? Uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. We're not really going to do the bore correctly. Okay, we're just going to have a keyway. Um, the face. All right, that's how wide the uh, the starter ring's going to be. And see the hub diameter. Um, we'll make that something. And then the HP. That's how wide the uh, flywheel will be. Okay, so let me clue you in how this is going to work. The teeth part is 0.33 of an inch wide. The total is two inches wide. So we want the teeth to be 0 0.33, and then we want the rest of it to equal two plus the one, uh, the the three three. So we need what one six seven. Okay. So like over here, we want that to be two, and this we want to be 1.67, and uh, that we don't. Well, that that's how we're gonna uh, make our weight for our flywheel, and this we want to be 0.33. Uh, none of these satisfy that, so we just pick either one. It doesn't matter. Hit customize. And we're just going to throw up a uh, keyway in there that we don't care about until it used to default. Because what we really want this to be is a taper like the original flywheel, but we probably don't want aluminum there. What we probably want is to have a, another piece made that is a, a steel um, tapered adapter. Uh, maybe it has a keyway on the outside of it. And then we put this on top of that. So there's a second part that needs to be made, probably. So we don't really care about this right now. Um, so let's see. The material, we're going to use 7075 aluminum. Look at all the stuff that they'll make it out of. Okay. So let me see if I can find 7075 aluminum. Which isn't necessarily the best thing to make it out of. And then we've got the bore diameter. We don't really care about that right now. It, <clears throat> um, what are we at? I think we've got a one in... One and an eighth. Let's just make it 1.25. But see, really, if we if we had a hub made, an adapter, it might be two and a half inches on the outside. So the inside of di di diameter, this should probably be 2.5, and that'll lighten it up a little bit. The face width, that's the T, 0 0.33. Okay. And then uh, the hub diameter. Um, this thing's eight and a half inches in diameter, roughly. Okay, that includes the T, so we have to be less than 8. Well, these are 0.33, and uh, multiply that by 2 for teeth on both ends, that's 0.66. So we need to be below like 7.8 inches if we want to be uh, below these teeth. Um, actually, we can go all the way, because um, it doesn't matter. The starter will be on one side, but we don't want the starter to slam into the flywheel. So we probably make this 7.9 or something at the maximum, but we don't necessarily want it to be that that big, but what the hell, we'll just do it anyhow, seven point, maybe it's seven and three quarter, okay, <clears throat> and then we have uh, this, okay, well this has to be two inches minus this point three three, so one point six seven, yeah, one point six seven, and really the reason we're doing this is to try to find out how much it weighs by using another program and cheating. I don't think they give you the weight here. So, let's see here. We've got all this. Okay. So we go over here and tell it to download. Okay, and it's going to assign a part number. We want an STL file because we're going to cheat and use it in a 3D printer slicer program. When you create something in 3D printing uh, software, then it has to be sliced up. and It makes a text file to instruct the printer how to print it. And so we're going to take the 3D file that you would use to design something and later on we're going to convert it into the slicer file only because it's going to tell us how much uh, stuff it used, how much, what the volume is <clears throat> and we can use that volume to figure out how much it weighs so get the 3D file 
and it took about two or three minutes to do it and just tell it to continue building parts because we're done here now what we want to do is go get our slicer program and it doesn't really uh, it's a free program this one is and it doesn't make a shortcut or at least I don't know where it is so I just search for it and it's this thing here slick 3 rexe so I start that tell it to run it okay and it opens like this I tell it to file open an STL file and then I have to go find this thing um, I think it's this one here. Was it 4:55 a.m.? Let me check it. It was made one minute ago, so that's it. So we want to open this one, and there's our flywheel. And if I grab it correctly, we can rotate it around and see it. There, look at that. We made a flywheel shit out. That bad. And what I was saying was we could have a steel adapter made with a taper in it, and uh, that would go in here, and then we'd uh, probably have a taper with a flange, a steel flange or something with bolt holes in it maybe or it could just have a uh, a round steel flange with a keyway and then we put a big square keyway and both meeting the two together and then the bolt um, squeezes them all onto the uh, assembly and the, the original bolt holds it all together so big deal but why did we do all this because I want to know how much this thing might weigh so hold on I gotta resize something here so we can see the bottom of this so down on the bottom it tells me volume and stuff but it's not there yet so what we do now is uh, we go to our print settings and make sure it says 100% on infill. We do, all right, see it says 20, we want 100%. We're gonna fill it completely up. And then we have to change the pattern to something else, that's fine. Um, so that's all we needed to do there. We don't want any holes in it, like it was 3D printing with plastic. So we go back to the platter over here somewhere. Where is it? Here, plater, platter. And what we want now is we want it to fill in this information down here and it'll only do that if we actually create the g-code to go to the printer so we tell it to export the g-code and tell it to save it and it starts running it down here again it took like three minutes to do it and when it's done it tells us it used 1592-1593 uh, cubic centimeters of uh, you know stuff to make it when it printed so 1593 so we go back up here and it tells us that this is how many grams uh, that would weigh. So we get our calculator out. And what did I say it was? 1593. So 1593 of those times, what, 2.81 grams a cc? We'll try that and see. So multiply that by 2.81. Was that grams? Now we need to know what grams are for an ounce. We'll see if this even looks close to right. I was doing it a different way earlier. What do we got? 4476. 157 ounces. This is probably close to right because it's probably going to be about 10 pounds because I made it huge. Yeah, so. Let me go back here. Where was I? Uh, 156. 158 divided by 16, that's going to be almost 10 pounds. 9.87 pounds. But the thing's way too big. Because it doesn't need to be... Come on now. It doesn't need to be this wide. If you go look at uh, the ones you can buy, this is a lot smaller right here. I made it huge on purpose. But uh, there you go. That's all you got to do to make a flywheel. Okay. To design one. And then uh, have these people make it for you or send it to your 3d printer and print a flywheel <laughs> you could do it if you had Delrin stuff but mine uh, won't print Delrin it's real pain I've got some here it's real pain to use but uh, there you go homemade flywheel then you need a hub adapter